Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I am so glad to have you here. Probably you are going to get a lot of questions after this interview. I have met a wonderful person. He's in India at the moment, and I want you to meet him. We are going to have a lot of things um, to talk about. And Vivek, welcome. This is Alcione, and I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you, Alcione. It's really a pleasure to meet you online, a wonderful person and your wonderful audience. Where we'll be having something live to discuss. Looking forward for some healthy chats. Great. Yes. Well, well, the work I do is to become like a bridge for people who want to just explore different things to heal themselves. And uh, we are going to talk about your path and emotional wellness, right? Tell us about yourself. Okay. I'm an electronics engineer, turned into an emotional wellness coach, and now also a certified international trainer. My specific approach towards life is working on emotional wellness. Why emotional wellness? Because emotions play a very important role in the life, whether it's Alciona, whether it's Vivek, or whether whoever is watching this video right now. We all are not machines. We are product of emotions. The day we are born, we are surrounded with emotions. And these emotions can be different emotions, whether it's love, whether it's fear, whether it's hatred, whatever, a number of emotions. And these emotions directly impact our physiology. Emotions create motions. So my aim is specifically work on emotions so that people can have a healthy life. Those who are already having certain health issues working on them, and those who are perfectly fit, also working on them so that they have a healthy life. But finally, as science has proven that 85% of the diseases are also psychosomatic. Psycho means mind and soma is body. So which, whatever starts in your mind can reflect in your body. And along with your medicines, suppose if someone is mm -hmm. having any health issue, whatever medicines are going on, along with it, if we work on the emotional aspect, and there can be n number of things in the emotional aspects. But when we work on that, the person starts seeing the result in a very faster way. I have personally worked on myself. So I'm the live example in that case. So that was my that is my mission to work on emotional wellness. And to start working on emotional wellness, was it something that you did all your life or, or something happened for you to start doing that? I specifically started, like professionally, I am an electronics engineer. I graduated in 1995. For almost like 20 to 23 years, I had worked in the semiconductor industry at a very senior level. One fine morning, I had met with a small accident where my this neck is actually broken into three pieces. C1, C2, C3, atlantoaxial instability, and also still C5 has a fracture. So post-surgery, when the four screws, two rods, and two clamps were put inside, my neck was completely locked. So you can imagine the post-traumatic stress disorder that yes, I can't move the neck. I was the person who used to drive thrice a week from Pune to Mumbai highway. And then my driving was stopped. But the entire life had came on standstill. And it, that depression definitely hit me back. Apart from the physical movements, the mental stress that hit me, that raised my sugar levels, that made my skin very bad, Lots of things happened. But then the best thing what happened was my doctor who had done my surgery. He clearly advised me that, boss, it is a time for you to take charge of your life. Either you, be, either you can be a guinea pig of medicines for lifelong, or you work on your mindset, accept the things and start working on your mindset, things will be changing. Then I started learning NLP. I first applied NLP on myself because NLP is an amazing technique which can help you to reframe your entire belief system. I worked on myself. Then I saw that how exactly the emotions are helping me. I saw how I am coming out of that particular trauma, whatever things. And I, I had to accept that, yes, my neck will, will not move now. Accepting that initially was a bigger challenge. But then my wife also supported me, my kids also supported me, my family, my mom supported me, everyone's support was needed. So I accepted the things and then I started teaching people that how to work on emotions. 
And when I teach NLP, when I work on NLP, my specific object is how to use NLP as a tool for handling emotions. And then I started working on various patients, various people, various people who are having a number of problems in the life, whether it's health, wealth, relationship, whatever. So that was the, my first stepping stone towards getting into this. And a small I, story. Um, one question. Uh, many people know NLP, but hmm. not all of them get the success that you did. Why? A very good question and a very honest answer for that is NLP, like people consider NLP as a very hi-fi something, something jumbo bumbo magic. It is not. If I, if I have to say a live example for NLP, like those who, all, all those who are watching the video right now, or even who will be watching later, like you guys brush your teeth daily in the morning. So when, when you were small, you started brushing your teeth, your mom and dad helped you, they told you, they actually imitated, then they, hold, they, they actually hold your hand and made you brush the teeth. And now that pattern was repeated over and over and over. And now it has become a complete program in your mind. That is NLP. Whatever today you are doing, whatever anyone who is watching this particular video even later, I would put it in a very simple, plain word that NLP is nothing but it is whatever you are doing today, because that program has been imprinted in your mind over and over and over time. So now, if some patterns are not helping you to change the situations, if some patterns are not helping you to see the difference in the life, then the techniques of NLP have to be used. Now, why I was successful, I'll not boast myself, but the thing is, I always believe that we are people, we are people who are product of emotions. We are not machines. People who I have seen many leaders, I'll not name anyone, but then I have seen people who, who teach NLP or who use NLP as if they are using it on machines. We can't expect a person to move like a on and off switch. We are dealing with people who are product of emotions. Every emotion has to be taken care of when we are working on any system. For example, if you are tightening a screw, you can't tighten the screw in the single go. It goes threadwise. So here we are directly dealing with a person who is alive. So we have to go step by step, understand what is happening in his or her life. And then the way we peel the onion, onion. We peel it step by step, and then we actually can experience it. Similarly, NLP has to be done. We are, we are dealing with people who are product of emotions. And at least I believe with my clients or when I teach my students, I make sure that I teach them that value the emotions first and then try to go for it. This is the key to success because I have experienced it on myself. I believe that, yes, if you preach it, practice it. If you don't preach it, don't practice it. I have worked on myself. I've seen the results. Yeah, and you know, this is a very important subject because there are many people who now, for example, are facing with physical illness. And India is the best place. I actually study Ayurveda and I know Ayurveda has a lot of power, mm -hmm. but I guess that emotional part is also very important. It's not only what you take as a medicine or a suppl supplement, right? Absolutely. In fact, India is the country, I am, I'm proud to be an Indian, but then still in India, we have almost 33% of people who are obese, 33 to 35%. That is the big population. And when we see obesity, it is also directly related to other health issues. So when you are studying Ayurveda, I'm really happy that someone out of India is focusing on Ayurveda. So NLP as an alternative subject, it, it's an amazing tool. So what do you say to people who think that only healing the body is like, like, for example, if you go to the doctor and your neck gets operated and then you just have to wait, uh, the results don't work because of trauma or because of what? For, in, for everyone, whether it's a physical injury or whatever things happen, it is important that you work on the emotions. For example, if you get, suppose if you hit something, like if you're walk, walking, if you're walking somewhere and you get, if you hit a stone, hitting of stone gives you a physical injury, no doubt. 
but that emotions they impact your mind on the long term and that becomes your belief that become and pain honestly pain doesn't exist pain is a feeling for example whoever is watching the video even later on or now like when you were hit in the chest when when you were small and when you were hit with some suppose something your parents asked that is it paining so you never knew that this feeling is termed as a pain basically we labeled that feeling suppose if they would have said beta have you hit with the johnny walker have you hit with something different probably you would have labeled it that way so we live on the we live our life on labels whether it's pain whether it's love whether it's what finally everything is feeling and the feeling of discomfort we have labeled it as pain so if we shift the emotions if we shift the labeling it becomes easy i would say i'd love to cite one example in this case for example suppose an xyz person is very healthy absolutely healthy now he develops some cough and cold so he will go to a doctor in a hospital and in the hospital what happens is first you have to pay the bill in advance for the booking with the doctor so what do you see on that slip as you know that like i would ask you this question that when you go to a doctor what do you see on the receipt when you pay the uh, amount for booking your appointment with a doctor what do you see on the script well you see the the, the diagnosis right no 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 before even meeting the doctor before even meeting the doctor when you pay the bill at a bill counter and then you have to go to go and meet the doctor it is written as name of the patient okay now alciona who was absolutely healthy all these years now is labeled as patient okay first thing now what happens is and i i really wish that you have a healthy life but i'm just citing an example so now suppose if you're having a cough and cold you go to a doctor who is like a md chest or md medicine and something you go and sit in front of him he will ask you n number of questions but at that at the same time there are big banners behind him one is asthma bronchitis cancer tuberculosis everything and we try to subconsciously read it everyone who is watching this video can relate it with relate with it we try to read it and we try to compare hey, whether i have this cough and cold no no i don't have this cough two, uh, two weeks ago this is just me. so subconsciously we try to relate with certain events and then that becomes our belief system so here nlp helps you to work on those belief systems if we work in the right way we can remove those old beliefs which are not uh, giving you any results if the life has to change the difference that creates a difference creates a difference that's what even tony robbins said yeah the difference so what creates, a difference, creates a difference what you are yes. talking about is this labeling that we do right labeling, so yes. then you become and you give yourself a title i am diabetic i am asthmatic i am yeah. Yes, yes. So that's part of an identity that one creates, right? You no, know, people create the identity. And we we actually we try to live with that identity and most of the people try to live with that identity because they get a secondary gain out of that. Secondary gain is like sympathy from people, love from people, attention from people. People try to give you all sorts of attention. So many people who are actually whether they are ill or not are not to say anything but the secondary gain plays very important in their life and for that secondary gain they try to play a victim card many times you must have seen you have taken n number of interviews plus you are a coach people try to play a victim card just to gain the sympathy for the secondary gain so even that, in such cases nlp works and that nlp is like a way of a lifestyle afterwards how how does it change your life like do you do you always like try to now make sure what labels you are using or what's the difference okay i'll put it this way mm. close your eyes one second don't see a red monkey sitting on your head what have you seen a red you, monkey you have seen a red monkey <laughs> right what you talk about nlp works like whatever things whatever belief is happening change that pattern 
through various techniques. Like I have also personally developed my own techniques by learning various because the thing is, when you learn NLP, finally your subconscious mind doesn't understand the difference between reality and imagination. So whatever way you can make it feel, make it understand that, yes, this is what the things are. This is what the labelings are changing. Things will change. For example, diabetic. I, I, I would like to put it this way. Why should a person say that I am a diabetic? Diabetic word itself starts with die. I'm just a bit more sweet. Change the label. The word diet. Why to use the word diet? Diet word itself starts with die. Food management. Why can't we say food management? Yeah, the meaning. I know it's an international it's language. language. Huh? Yeah. It's an international, it's an international word, acknowledged word, accepted word. But then the word it starts with die. The word starts with diet. Yeah. So why to use that word? Instead of that, say I'm little, I'm more sweet than you. Suppose if someone is diabetic, I'm I'm more sweet than you. And then working on those patterns, then, then comes the actual picture that why diabetes has happened, why the things have happening. Because diabetes, of course, I'll not comment on anything about medical science. The treatment is necessary. But most of the times, diabetic happens out of the psychosomatic health issues. When your body is under continuous fight mode, definitely it gives you the diabetes. What, what would you use for a person who has migraines? That would be interesting. Migraine, the first and important approach in my case, if someone comes to me, first and the most important thing is I ask him his medical records, what doctor has suggested. Because migraine can be due to various reasons. So it is important for any NLP trainer who works with health issues especially. It is important either you understand the medical science or you take a help of a doctor that what it is. Because migraine can be caused due to n number of reasons. Epilepsy is totally different. But when we say migraine also, and if suppose if you start working on the person who is who has just came to you for migraine, probably you might help him to come out of that migraine at that time, probably. But without understanding the root cause of that migraine, if we are just shifting that focus of the pain, that can be dangerous. So whenever a person comes for health issues, his medical reports are needed. Like I try to honestly get the medical reports understanding what is his, what are his blood parameters because every blood parameter also defines that what emotions the person has suppressed. And, um, and, and, your, and, your, and your blood reports speak about it. Yeah, and Vivek, what do you think about, I mean, because you are in India as well, you use a lot the karma and dharma concept. So do you think that a person is like, um, because he has a heavy karma, that's the reason why he has to like have so many I, issues I, or challenges? I, 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 and it's, it's not about India. It's not about anywhere in the world. But yes, karma definitely hits back. Karma definitely hits back. Because I am also a certified past life regression therapist. I have seen people who carry lots of things from their past lives. So where the things remain unanswered by medical science, there is always a possibility that we have to look out for alternative things. And that's the reason alternative therapies are growing and people are seeing the results. So karma plays a very important role. And even if we don't go for past lives or whatever things, suppose if, I'll put it this way, how karma hits back. Suppose if I'm not doing any exercise, so definitely my body will become like a potato couch. So that is my karma and it has hit me back. It's not about spiritual karma or something like that. But yes, that, that always exists. I, I, and I being a, as I said, I'm being a past life regression therapist. I believe in past life. I believe in karmic theory that if you do something bad to someone, it will definitely come back to you. If you try to do good something to someone, it will definitely uh, help you. Now, if we see the second aspect of that, how it will help. Suppose if I have done something bad to someone, that is continuously in my mind that I have done it. Somewhere or the other, it is hitting my subconscious mind and it will hit my body also. 
and it will show me the results in terms of health issues. Like you are Ayurveda practitioner, you are learning about Vat, Kaf and Pitta. So how, like a person who is continuously thinking about something, probably he develops Pitta very easily if he is continuously tensed. So your karma speaks in terms of the health issues. If our karmas are wrong, definitely you will see the impact on the health issues. If the karmas are wrong, probably you will also get a bad, you will also get bankrupt. Like you are having good amount of money, but if your karmas are bad, that you are going and wasting the money everywhere, you will go bankrupt. So as you know, karma plays a very important role. And I am a firm believer of karma. Do good, believe in good, and you will get the good. And the main question now, talking about this emotional wellness is, if there are people watching that are heavily and like in this dark night of the soul where they don't see any any light and they just are feeling depressed or that there is no hope, what's the first step that you could tell them? Friends, if you are watching me right now and when you say that there is no hope, I would put it this way that what makes you think, like suppose if you are in your house. You always think that what you will do tomorrow. So what makes you think that you will be awake tomorrow? There are millions of people who never awake tomorrow morning, but then still you are doing something for tomorrow. So you have a hope. Then if you have a hope for doing something tomorrow, like you decide that tomorrow I'll wear this shirt, this pant. If you have a hope in that, why not to have a hope in the positive life? It's always about how you see the things and how you make the things. Because if you believe that things can change, things will definitely change. It's only in our mind because our mind knows how to make or break the things. So believing is most important and we live in hope. We live in the world where the hope is most important tool. Hope has to be there. Okay. And Vivek, What's your experience with people who go to different types of therapy and they don't seem to change? Is it because they don't want to change the label they give themselves? As I said like a few minutes back, the success of treatment for a therapist lies with the patient. Like if the secondary gains are very strong, For example, if someone is having, say, some health issue, and with that health issue, if he is getting n number of attentions from the people who had not even asked him previously, and he was looking out for that attention, he was looking out for that love, and after fee after having that illness, if he is getting that love, there are bright chances that the person starts feeling good about his feeling that I am ill, I am getting all the love. That secondary gain. And then he always tries to play a victim card. I'm ill, I'm not having this. So no matter to which therapist or doctor he goes, nothing will work because he has decided to play a victim card and get that sympathy. Just to gain that sympathy, people follow a number of tricks. Yeah, so the victim card is the key, right? Victim card, that too, a person tries to play a victim card with himself. He is fooling himself or herself. Like how long can people help you? Suppose even if you are playing a victim card, the person who is trying to show sympathy today, tomorrow, finally he will say, how long should I do for you? There is always an end to something. It is not a horizon. We are people who are product of emotion. Finally, everyone has a life and everyone moves on. Things, okay. there are hardly, few people continue to give the support. Few people continue to show that sympathy, but finally even they have their feelings. We have to respect. So how long should we play that term card? We should decide because life is ours. We have to make sure that we stand for ourselves, whether it is NLP, whether it's hypnosis, whether it's whatever therapy you do, the patient should be ready to change yeah. himself or herself. And before even changing, acceptance is a key. Like if you allow me to share the screen, I'll yes, show you so something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll just show you something. Uh, let's 
Just hit open again. You are able to see it? Yes. This is in my neck. C1, C2, that's, C3. That's how your neck is at this point, right? Yeah, it's it's and it's permanently with me now. Now I can't move left or right. This is with me, and plus I have a fracture here at C5. So, if I wouldn't have accepted the fact, I would have been always into that state of mind that yes, nothing can move. So accept the thing. See, there is a difference between limitation and limiting belief. This is my limitation. I have accepted it. And based on this limitation, I started to carve something different, some different route through NLP. So I left my engineering career back and I started working on these things because now this became my niche that if I can stand back, I can help others. And this is how I have connected with global clients across the globe. People come to me for various therapies also. Now I practice medical name numerology. So that is an added thing for me. And based on this, I was also awarded as India's best emotional wellness coach by Newspaper Association of India. So it's nothing to boast about, but this was a small achievement by grace of God. Sorry. So this was a small achievement by grace of God that helped me. But key to come out of any, any, anything, whether it's a disturbed relationship, spoiled marriage, bad marriage, bad job, whatever, accept the things, things will change. People are not ready to accept. People are always looking forward for blame game, like either to blame someone, either to blame circumstances, or go into that guilt. And if a person goes into guilt, then that is the biggest problem. So what was the reframing you had to use for this, uh, this, uh, this thing that you have, you, you don't have these limiting beliefs, but what, what are they now? What do you think about yourself? What's the subject? Okay. The day I could walk back on my feet, I saw that I have a good potential to help people, that how your life can change. That helped me. Like now I think that instead of thinking my neck, if I can help 100 people to stand back on their feet, that why, I define my why instead of focusing on how. Like if I would have focused on how that, how will I survive, how will I do, how will I do this? I shifted my focus from how to why. Why I have to do it. That will give me happiness. That will give happiness to people. That smile helps me. That helps. So defining the why is most important. Most of the people, like if I have to cite a small example, when someone goes for a weight loss, people always think about how do I lose the weight? How will I do? Instead of focusing on how, if we focus on why, that why I have to lose the weight, what difference will it make in my life? How exactly my life will change? Immediately the things start initiating because if you see people who go for weight loss journey, probably most of them quit after one or two months and they go back to square one, maybe double the weight. Because their why is not defined. They focus on how. But maybe there are different also levels of why, right? There are some whys that are just because you want to impress somebody or you want your family to be happy, but not inside. Yeah. <laughs> any, any why, any why, any why, as long as it is keeping you motivated, that will help you. So for example, a person should have at least eight to 10 whys. Or else what happens is, suppose if there is only one or two whys, like as you, as you rightly said, that a person wants to impress someone. Say a girl, suppose if some boy wants to impress a girlfriend or a girl wants to impress a boyfriend. And if that is the only why, and if the person ditches, probably this person will go into more trauma and more depression. So having eight to 10 whys, which should start with what, why exactly do I need to do this? Why, what changes will happen in my life? How exactly will be my status? What will be my family level? How exactly can I help people? So eight to 10 whys when they are defined, things become easy. Like when I ask questions to the, like uh, when a corporate training, 
and I ask a CEO of the company or a director of the company that why you come to office, give me 10 reasons. Many of them are not able to give reasons beyond four reasons beyond that. Because defining why is important. If you really want to see the shift, why is most important factor. Yeah. And so it, it, it is a very important role. What I'm learning from you is like this why is like roots, right? That are different branches yes. and they, yes. you have to have yes. a strong root so that yes. you can stay. Strong root, strong motivation, because the more whys you have defined into some modalities that why, 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 it's always good to ask the questions that why you have to do this, what exactly, when exactly. See, English language, nothing against it, but yes, it works on indefinite verbs. We will go. When, it is not defined. Why, it is not defined. And people play around with it. So coming to a perfect sentence is equally important that define what is needed, when is needed. And most of the people play with indefinite words. We will go, we, 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 we will do this, whatever it is, but then it is not specified. So it's defining like very, is important. It's very impersonal also, right? It doesn't give you like a target to know exactly yes. when that's going to happen. Hmm. Okay. So defining why plays a very important role. And now let's talk a little bit about what you said that you also do regression, right? Past life regressions. So yes. um, there, there are people that also ask me and say, oh, do you think it's good for me to do regression, but I am depressed, I am sick, I'm overweight. And they sometimes have so much trouble already in this life. Do you think it's good to go back into past lives at that point? Uh, at this point, I would like to clear and I would like to put my thoughts on past life that past life regression therapy should not be used as a picnic or a vacation. That who I was in the past life, whether I was a king, whether I was a queen or whatever. Most of the people want to know that what they were in the past life. Regression therapy should be used like what I do personally with my clients is whatever is suppose XYZ problem is happening in your life, say relationship, say overweight, say whatever it is. You can take back a person to any of his past life where he had a healthy life. For example, if someone has to have a good uh, weight balance, we can take the person to any of his healthy life, any, anything. We don't know. He doesn't know. Go back to that life, pick up those patterns, bring them in this life, and your subconscious mind knows how to make it happen and use it. Suppose if someone is having a disturbed relationship, take him to the past life, well, at least once in his any thousand lives, two thousand lives, he must have had a happy relationship. Pick up that pattern, imprint it in your mind, and come back to this life. Finally, it's all about putting efforts in the right direction. Belief plays a very important role, because there might be people who will say that what is the guarantee that it will happen? What is the guarantee that you will be alive tomorrow? There's no guarantee. It is only the belief, it's only the hope which works. And a subconscious mind doesn't understand the difference between reality and imagination. Past life regression definitely helps you to see a different life in a different way. It depends upon how you see and how the therapist works. But it works, that is for sure. It works. Some people don't see the result. Because they come with certain pre-assumed beliefs. It was like, uh, I would put it this way. Who will not see the result? People who come in one of eight mode, that you please take me to past life and show me. They will never see the result. People who are mentally retarded or mentally sick, they will never see the results. And a child will be five years, probably he will not see the result because he will five to seven years, he will not understand. But most important hurdle for past life regression therapy is people who are in one of fight mode. You show me. This will never happen for them. Because it's not like showing something like this is stone and this is water. It is a therapy. Hypnosis also doesn't work on people who are always into a one of fight mode. It will never work. So a person who wants to change, he will see the I would cite an example on this. Like you took up a good topic. Uh, suppose, like, there was, there was a Mr. X, suppose we call him as Sunil. A Sunil, as a person, Sunil, who is born, and since his birth, since his childhood, 
he has all he already he also continuously believes that he is a dead person he has a strong belief that he is a dead person he goes to school he goes to college he gets married sub everything is happening but still he believes that his, he is a dead person one fine morning finally his wife or someone takes him to a doctor and the doctor tells him that doctor asks him that what is the problem he says that i am a dead person so doctor does all that speaking and everything what doctor speaks with him and then finally he doctor asks him that do dead people bleed so sunil said no why a dead person can bleed so what the doctor did he took a scalpel and made a wound on his hand so now what sunil must have said after making a wound what sunil must have said what do you think elsiona oh, i don't know most of the people will say that sunil said oh it's paining it's bleeding and everything everything sunil said that oh i didn't knew that even dead people bleed <laughs> so if a person doesn't want to change no one in the world can change him so the key concept in any healing whether it is reiki like i am a reiki master also whether it's reiki whether it's healing whether it's nlp whatever we do the success of the treatment of the regime lies also in the client's hand therapist will use his skills but the success will depend upon the client Yeah, or the person who wants to see the result. And I, and I think that's very important what you are saying because there are many people who are used to this fast food uh, way of life, right? You go one yes. time to a session and then you want to change your 40 years of messing up your life. That, 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 that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. I tell my clients clearly, boss, this is a treatment plan, like minimum five sessions, minimum 10 sessions, so that you at least start seeing the result. And then if you have a belief, go ahead with that. but you can't see a miracle it's not a magic wand neither i am a god neither you are a god to see the magic so only gods can help or only angels can help the angel behind you they can help but then we are human beings and we are therapists we are not god and what's what's your experience about uh, the people you have met because you did a lot of uh, workshops and conferences Do you have um like a specific memory of something that really changed somebody's life that you could share? Yes. Uh I would put it this way. I again I would cite one example. Suppose if I give a bottle to you. Okay. And that is half filled with milk and half empty. And I say Elsiona please keep this bottle in the shelf for one month. And after one month and you have only one bottle so after one month i say alciana please please bring that bottle and now we'll add some new milk in that what will you do i will empty the bottle and then we'll put new yeah milk. you will empty and then you'll clean the bottle or else the new milk will also get spoiled right but then has alciana done this in her real life when it comes to the past experiences when it comes to the past trauma and it's not directly asking you and it's a general saying yeah. that when people try to do the things they don't try to empty the past bottle they try to add on the new experiences new relationship whatever it is and then that also gets bad this is where i work on when the client comes to me in my first and important step is to empty the bottle whatever is there stored and i don't even ask them that what has happened in your past life by matlab in your whatever trauma whatever thing because there is no point in taking them to the traumatic stage again instead of that i use certain techniques where the person will automatically at least reduce the intensity of that event cleaning that bottle is important because if we don't clean the bottle and if we try to add something new in that even the new experience will go bad to make it very easy when does a person change the job like most of the people who are watching this video you will say that you change the job when you are fed up with the present company or something like that but then friends if you are leaving the job when you are already at the rock bottom in the company probably you are carrying the same negative energies that frustration in the new job and you are not able to give the best but if you quit the job when you are at the peak chances of getting the salary hike is much more and your productivity will be much more 
when you are at a peak of emotions. So never quit the job. Never go. Never go for a new relationship when already you are hit in one rock bottom relationship. Come out of that. Clean the bottle. Empty the slate, and then try to write something new on this. And this is a very, very good uh, example because there are many people, for example, in relationships. How do you explain the fact of, um, like, doesn't matter if it's the man or, or or the woman that goes with somebody else, and then they break up, and then next day he's living with this the, with the lover. Uh, following the example of the bottle, what happened there? <laughs> That's what I said. That probably. They will not be able to match up with the new person's expectations because they have already have one benchmark in their mind. For example, X Y Z person has done this, and now they get into a new relationship. As you said, immediately next day, or even the morning, they will break up with someone, and evening they are with some other person. They are going with the original benchmark, and they try to compare the new person with the old person. And again, that rift happens. And one fine morning, you see that the person is again with the third person. The cycle goes on because, because it's a pattern, we, right? Yeah, that that that's a pattern, and sometimes some people feel happy about that. Yeah, proud. That, that can be an, that can be also a psychological disorder at times. That a person feels happy in going multiple relationships one after that, one after another. It happens, so that has to be very carefully observed. That what is the pattern? What exactly is happening with a person? Is he or she really going into a rock bottom, or they are just hitting the person and moving ahead with the next person? So that analysis is equally important. Wow, there are so many things to take into account. Yeah, you you just can't say that yes, this is the only one side. Like even a coin has three sides: one side, two side, and the third side is the binding side of the coin, which makes the things strong. I always say, see the third side of the coin because, especially when it comes to relationship healing or relationship counseling, the third side of the coin is very important, which is trust. Wow, that's okay. amazing! It's the first time I hear that. It's that that works amazingly. So, okay, now let's talk about this medical numerology. What is hmm. it all about? Because we know about Pythagoras numerology, tarot numerology. What type of numerology is medical numerology? Okay, medical numerology is an emerging field where you can see the person's like. For example, when you are born with say, your particular date of birth, you can't change your date of birth. You can only change your name, and the name your date of birth specifies that what exactly can be your health issues, what exactly can happen, and when they can happen. Apart from that, the name which you carry, that name vibrates certain frequency. So, if that name is not in sync with your birth number, destiny, there are many terms. I'll not go into depth of numerology, but medical numerology helps you to analyze the name of the person. What is wrong in that? Because every name is associated with certain planet. Every name is associated with certain energy. So, if some if some wrong energies are combined together, finally, name is a combination of few alphabets which resemble to certain planets. And which have certain vibrations also. If we go with, uh, if we go in the advanced physics, every alphabet vibrates, every sound vibrates. The way we pronounce, for example, if I call your name Alcione, Alcione, so Alcione, the pronunciation also makes a different vibe. And suppose if I call Alcione, you might feel angry because that is not your name. Your original name is Alcione. That vibration matters, and even in case of health issues, because if your plan, if your numbers are wrongly placed, if your name is wrongly placed, probably it can trigger a health issue which is in in your hidden birth date. And I have seen many cases. I have testimonials of people where they have been working along with the doctor, but they couldn't see the results. And after correcting their name, they have seen the results. So it makes a difference because medical numerology is an emerging field which should be given a thought of. Just playing around with the names doesn't matter. Doesn't help. You should define the name in such a way that a person is able to live a healthy life. See, in last two years, we have seen multi millionaires and multi billionaires who have been wrapped in the plastic and been dumped into graveyards. Yeah, 
because of the COVID. All the money they had in their life couldn't help them. Even in normal case also, health is very important factor. So the name numerology helps. And I, I like on my YouTube channel also, I have published many videos on medical numerology along with the examples. So your, med your name defines that what exactly can happen with you, when it can happen, a trigger factor. And based on that, a person is like, you can take care of your health. When, so when you have a GPS system in your car, you use a GPS system. Similarly, you can also take a guidance. I'm not saying that one should follow it blindly, but at least use it as a guidance so that you can take a preventive measure for something which can happen and something which can't happen. But do you have to do you have to do this regularly or is it one in a, once in a lifetime? It's, it's, only, it's only one once in a life. For example, if some name is not vibrating at a good frequency, and that too you don't have to change it on the official records. The beauty of this is like you have to change it only on the social media, because go back to twenty years or twenty five years back when there was no internet. We used to go to bank and sign the checks. We used to do everything on the, by name, like you used to sign everywhere. But nowadays, even when Elsiona is sleeping, her name is vibrating because it's on the electronic media. Electronic media, finally, it's matter, it's particles. And it's your email is continuously working. Your Facebook is continuously working. Because for example, suppose if you run a Facebook ad today night, tomorrow morning, you might see seven to eight leads which are coming. So definitely Facebook was working. Facebook, that ad was working. It, it was not that a Facebook person was working. It was that your name was vibrating. It was working for you. So electronic media, you have to change your name on electronic media. You have to write that name particular times. For example, if you have been called Alciona for past 40 years, 48 years to be precise, then if some change is needed, even you have to put efforts by writing that name so that you start seeing that changes because it helps you to believe that, that yes, these things are happening with me. And then things go really good. So what, what, I'm, understanding, works. what yes. I'm understanding is that now because of social media and so, so much of this electronic communication, um, it's even more now than before. So before it was not that bad in terms mm. of managing this energy. And see, now the world is changing. So traditional numerology, traditional astrology, whatever things we were doing, world is changing. So we also have to change our thought process. We need to explore the different dimensions of this science. It's an age old science. But then as the world is progressing, we also have to progress and see it from the different perspective. Like when people come to me for learning numerology also, I tell them that why you want to learn specific numerology? Why you can't be a divorce numerologist? Why you can't be a medical nurse? There are people who really need help on divorce that to make a relationship better. So by changing, by correcting the names, you can make married lives better. You can make relationships better. So why not to work on that segment? When a, when a doctor, a general practitioner does an MD, he becomes MD gynec, MD cardiac, MD, MD brain surgeon. Why you can't explore yourself as a better neurologist in a better field? like become a divorce numerologist, become a medical numerologist, become a career numerologist. There are multiple ways to make it happen. So it depends upon how you th think it. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. We're going to be talking more about this in the next coming yes. interviews. I'm, I'm just, yes, that, that makes so much sense. Wow. It's, it's a journey which has to move on. Finally, we all are human beings, we are product of emotions, and we have to respect the emotions for people. We have to live the emotions. So, so one that, thing that, that I'm, uh, I just want to, to ask you is, you are mm. talking so much about this vibration of names. So when one, like teenagers, they put themselves names following an actor or following somebody that they admire. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is wrong. Because the vibrations fall. For example, if you say any, any, any suppose Indian actors, I don't know foreign actors, but then suppose if you pick up some name of some Indian actor, X, Y, Z, maybe that vibration is good for them. That vibration, even numerology works in case of animals. 
like pet dogs. If you call a dog by a particular name, he can become a proper dog. But if your if your name is wrong, it can also create an aggression. It works everywhere. It works in your business. It works in your regular life. It works everywhere because world is vibrating like this pen in my hand. This is not a solid pen. This is a particular material which is vibrating at a very high frequency and a cohesive strength of that material has made this form a single thing. You and me are also the matter which is vibrating at a particular frequency and a cohesive strength has given us this shape. So finally, everything vibrates. When I'm shifting this pen from here to here, I'm creating a huge shift in the universe. So everything vibrates. We and all have vibrations. That's something that when you when you do tarot reading, you have these archetypes, right? So yes. there are some people that have two names and you can really notice when you'd call them one name or the other name is like a different personality shows up. Personality changes once you change the name. Jesus, it's true. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big science because a person, for example, if suppose if, 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 if at the home, if in the home, if the guy is called as say Ram, and if outside his friends are calling him Sham, his identity will change because his thought patterns change. Yeah, and so that, your name plays a very important role. And that goes together with this, um, with Vedic astrology, when you have a planet and you have to worship a specific deity, not yes, any deity, yes, right? It's because yes, you have absolutely. to invoke that energy, right? Yes, yes, yes. Invoking that energy is important. Wow. Okay. I need to learn more. So amazing. I'm learning so much. What's what's the advice that you want to give to, to end up this interview uh, to the people who are scared about the, what is going on with all these infections and worldwide problems? The best advice is, yes, do follow all the medical treatments which are being advised by the government. But most important thing is work on your emotions. Emotions create motions. If your emotions are at bottom low, the risk of getting the health issues is more. Because your negative emotions, your anger, your resentment, there are bright chances that you catch up with infections easily. So try to live a happy life follow all the medical advices which the doctor is giving. And along with that, being happy within oneself, identifying oneself is most important. If you are happy within yourself, nothing in the world can make you sick. But of course, following the medical advice is important. You should follow all the medical guidelines, but first take care of yourself. Put your, like I, I'll put it this way. When you travel in the flight, what is that important lesson we learn in the flight? So you have the to air put the mask is. first to yourself. Yeah, and before that, she says that before helping out the fellow passengers, put your own mask first. Like I had published a book with this name and I had gotten an award in India for this book, put your own mask first. Because unless and until you take care of yourself, you can't take care of your family, you can't take care of anything, you can't go to office, you can't do anything. So taking care of yourself is most important. So friends who are watching this video, the most important message for everyone is put your own mask first. How, how can uh, people find you? Do you do private consultations? I People can find me on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. They can add me on Facebook also. Plus, I can share my number if you don't mind. I can, uh, yes, my please. mobile number is plus, uh, plus 91. That is India number. And 855-109. 9009. You can always WhatsApp me on this number and then we can fix up an appointment. Or else you can find me on Facebook. I'm there on YouTube also with the name Vivek Mantri. My channel is already monetized on YouTube. And uh, things there are like I would honestly say that who are watching this video, do subscribe the YouTube channel because I have plenty of videos there which can help you to make your life better. I have given many techniques on YouTube. 
watch those videos it can help you to make the life better and those who want to give up get a get a personal consultancy can definitely contact me on my number i'm always there i'll see on has also has my number you can also connect with her anytime. yes i can share so maybe one one thing that we can do is you can send me a few videos that you advise to watch first from your channel yes, and i can just yes 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 her. okay Absolutely. Thank you so much. This is such a blessing for me to find you and to have this interview. It is my blessing that I'm on Alciona TV and uh, with due respect, with thanks to God that we are directly communicating with each other. And I really wish a very, very, very prosperous new year to all the viewers, all the people who will be watching this video and especially to Alciona for arranging this particular meeting and having this discussion. Thanks from bottom of the heart. Thank you. Namaste. And I hope that if Namaste. you come to Bolivia, you just visit here, okay? The we'll world is small. world is small. Yes. And when the, once the intent is set, the things happen. Right. So just it's just a matter intention. of setting the intent. It will happen. Thank you so much. Have a thank wonderful you, day and night. And thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.